headlined by the battle for the IBF Middleweight Championship, the holder, Bernard Hopkins, the challenger, Antoine Eccles. And before we get to that, a battle in the junior lightweight division, which also falls into that entertaining category. Robbie Peden of Australia against the veteran and a tough veteran, Benito Rodriguez. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. We had an awful lot to talk about tonight. Bernard Hopkins is a guy who falls into that category of best fighter nobody ever heard of. And yet, he's been a middleweight champion for five years. He's defended the title on no less than nine occasions. And yet, he hasn't had that one big money fight, nor has he earned the respect. And besides that fact, he is on everybody's list of pound for pound, the best fighter in the world. He's on the cusp now, though. Supposedly, there's already been a deal side for five fights, which will pay him the kind of money that he feels he should have been getting a long time ago. One thing stands in his way, and that one thing, a very tough customer by the name of Antoine Eccles. Alongside once more, my partner Rich Murata. And Rich and Eccles, you got a guy with his 22 wins, 22 knockouts. This guy's no fluke. He's the real deal. No, Antoine Eccles presents a very legitimate threat uh, to the supremacy of Bernard Hopkins tonight, and in fact, to any middleweight in the world because of his singular ability to punch. He has fought progressively better opponents. He has been whacking them out one after another, including Kevin Tillman in a wild swinging fight. Look at the reaction his punch brings from Tillman. He's hurt immediately, but at the same time, you see his free swinging style which could possibly get him in trouble here this evening against someone as skilled as Bernard Hopkins. Yeah and we talk about Eccles being a banger of course Hopkins is the same way now he can box you but he can also finish that may be something he does better than anyone in his division that may be why he's been champion for five years. Well you know and despite that long reign that Bernard Hopkins has and a great record that he has to his credit the fact is he is still a man in search of he is in search of recognition as one of the best pound for pound he is in search of the million dollar paydays he feels should correspond along with it. In his last fight, he dominated Robert Allen. This was a brilliant fight by Hopkins. They had fought a controversial four round and no contest in the fight before when he was thrown out of the ring basically by referee Mills Lane. Accidentally injured his ankle, couldn't go on. People thought maybe he had reached the end of the line. That wasn't the case. Hopkins showed he's still got an awful lot left. And despite the fact that he's not making the kind of money that he wants to make and very likely will make, this falls into that category of most important fight of his career because this is the one that gets him there. Right now, let's meet the third member of our broadcast team. We take you to the champ, Sean O'Grady. Sean? Thanks, Barry and Rich. Arguably, the toughest division in boxing is this middleweight division. The champion of that uh, middleweight division is Bernard Hopkins. And Bernard, this is the 10th defense of your IBF championship fight. You're going up against a pretty tough character. How do you face him? Punch. You win by punching, you win by fighting. Uh, you don't win by running, you don't win by holding, you don't win by any other thing but throwing punches, and, and hopefully he'll go down quick enough so you don't have to do any more damage to him. Now, Bernard, you've said in the past you want glamour fights. This is a glamour fight for you. Well, You're not looking beyond this, are you? All championship fights, uh, I never look behind. I always look for the future. You know, if I, if I fight a fight today, it's impossible for me not look for tomorrow because tomorrow keeps me motivated. A lot of people get missed understood about when a guy said he want this particular fighter and he's not fighting that fighter tonight that means that that's motivating me for the future right. well you're, you got lots of motivation tonight because you're going up against a very difficult opponent in Antoine Eccles back over to you guys I think it's going to be a spectacular night of boxing very rich yeah I absolutely agree with you Sean this is a guy though that is all business he's had some problems outside the ring inside the ring he comes to fight and that's what he's there all about tonight. And the future for Bernard Hopkins is now. That's our main event. Before we get to that, though, another outstanding fight, I think. This should be an action fight. The junior lightweight division, Robbie Peden, out of Australia and into your hearts, gets it on with a veteran <laughs> by the name of Benito Rodriguez. And, uh, Rich, let's talk about Rodriguez. This is a guy that's been around the track more than once. And a couple of times he's hit the finish line first. Yeah, you know, I don't know how a guy suddenly starts getting good at the age of 33, but that's what's happened with Benito Rodriguez. His last two fights have been the greatest of his career, including a victory after fighting Eight other world champions. He goes in against Kelvin Kevin Kelly this year, and look at that left hook, which knocks down the former world champion Kevin Kelly, so highly regarded by everyone in search of another a world title shot. Was really surprised by Rodriguez, not only by that knockdown, but Rodriguez went on to dominate and win that fight on a solid decision. So it's a very tough card to draw for Robbie Peden. He comes up from Australia. He had been off for a while because of a, an injury that uh, was suffered outside the boxing ring. This is really only a second fight back, and this is a tough one for him. Yeah, as he goes in against uh, Rodriguez, but we like what we saw out of Robbie Peden. He certainly is a kid who can bang. Trying to follow in the footsteps of Costa Zoo, and he throws a Costa Zoo-like punch there. That beautiful right hand that knocked out 
uh, Eloy Ortega, in fact, in this very same ring just a few weeks ago. You know, we always tell, show you the tale of the tape at this juncture, but this time we're going to show you a tale of two fighters, really, and there's such a huge difference between Rodriguez and Peden that doesn't have anything to do with, with weight or height or reach. No, it's all about experience, and in this fight, Peden is giving away experience, he's giving away rounds, he's giving away fights against world champions, and it's uh, solidly in Rodriguez's favor. Now, can a young man go up, take the step up, and fight this kind of a fight against an experienced opponent? We're going to get those answers uh, imminently, as right now we take you to the center of the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy? Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the beautiful Mikasuki Resort and Casino in South Florida. As we have a big night of action in store for you, it's fight time on Fox Sports Net, brought to you by America Presents. Tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the Mikasuki Athletic Commission. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Stanley Simpson and Dr. Ramon Garcia Septien. Timekeeper at the bell is Jeremy Levine. All right, fans, here we go. This bout coming away as one of our special attractions, 10 rounds of boxing in the junior lightweight division. Introducing to you first our referee in charge of this bout, we have Jorge Alonso. All right, fans, here we go. Introducing to you on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red and green trim, hailing from Reynosa, Tamaulipas, Mexico. His weight, 129 and one half pounds. His record stands at 30 wins, 27 losses and two draws, with 19 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the WBA Latin America Super Featherweight Champion, introducing Benito El Mulato Rodriguez. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10 round attraction, wearing silver trunks with black trim. He joins us all the way from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. He weighed in at the junior lightweight limit of 130 pounds even. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 14 wins, no losses. Nine of his wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Robbie, the bomber of Peden. Once again, Jorge Alonso is our referee in charge. Ten rounds of boxing. In the dressing room, okay? I want to expect the man to win five from both of you. Any questions here? No you cannot play Olympia, eh? Come, talk him. Touch him up. And let's take a look at the Mikasuki rules. The three knockdown rule will be in effect. There won't be a standing eight, eight count. A fighter could be saved by the bell in no round, and only the referee could stop the fight. On the headbutt rule, we go to the cards after the fourth round. This one's scheduled for ten. Junior lightweights, and uh, we always kid about nicknames, but I think uh, the bomber, a very apropos nickname for Robbie Peden. Yeah, and he's uh, gaining in popularity. Uh, certainly in Australia, the people know him there, but the fans got an opportunity to see him here in the United States not that long ago, and he did uh, very well with that knockout win over Eloy Ortega. Yeah, and you're comparing him to Costa Zoo, I think is a very, very fair comparison. I'm not trying to make necessarily a comparison. Yes, yes as to the success level that Zoo has attained and what Robbie Peden hopes to attain, but, but his style is very similar. Yeah, he's a come-forward guy. Zoo uh, certainly would have more overall uh, skills and abilities at this time, but he has the same kind of will, I think, as, uh, as Acosta Zoo does, and he uh, has the same kind of feeling of he's going to do what it takes to win out there, which is basically coming forward and grabbing the victory. Rodriguez, of course, with uh, all the experience, and he's had some very good successes. You look at his opponent list, you know, his record is barely over 500, Barry, but his opponent list has been unbelievable. Not only Kevin Kelly, the world champion, the former world champion that he beat earlier this year, but this is a guy who's fought uh, uh, Diego Chico Corrales twice, uh, who's the uh, current the world champion, Freddie Norwood, current world champion, Julian Lorce, uh, Manuel Medina, and a lot of others who have just uh, recently lost the championship. So he's put himself in tough in the very beginning of this career. And then that whack out that uh, we showed you a little bit of a moment ago against Kevin Kelly, that's, that's his last fight. That's a great win. Sean Brady is joining us here at the table. That's a heck of a win for him. It is a good win for him. Fighter, you know, he takes a great amount of respect in his career. He likes what he does, and even with that left hook there, see the force that he has, the balance he hey. has in the ring. He uh, kind of just pushes his opponent off his feet. Benito was quick to look up at referee Jorge Alonso yeah. there. That was no knockdown. He can get in that jab home in this round. They've been trying to give him down to see him bending over. See, they're trying to lower his center of gravity. Kevin Berry, Roger Bloodworth, and his boss, Wes Cohen. Good people around here. Yeah. 
down and bring him up. Bring him up. Protect uh, yourself uh, at all times. Bring it up. Referee that time. Dale. Dale. Very protect yourself at all at all times. It's the first rule of the boxing ring. Absolutely. One of the most famous stories of boxing right. war was a time when Jack right. Dempsey I got fought it. Jack so Sharkey. Sort of I'm and uh, he, Sharkey turned to the referee to complain about a foul. Dempsey took that opportunity when Sharkey put his hands down to clock him one and knock him out. Were you there? Uh, no. Wow. But I, uh, <laughs> that is amazing. Rich, incredible. We have a historian on our hands here. We, we certainly do. He does, a, he does a fine job every week. <laughs> nice quick right hand by Pete. Beaton has a lot of good weapons, too. He's got a good right hand. Effective jab. I like, hook. I like Robbie Keaton. Yeah, fast. Don't, don't pull him. No me mira mi pelea, hombre. Yeah. End of the first round. Very effective first round for Peden. Typical round where he didn't get off the gas from the opening bell. Fight time on Fox Sports Net is brought to you tonight by Western Union. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. In the corner of uh, Benito Rodriguez and uh, the language of the choice here would be Spanish. Uh, let's take a look, Rich, at your scouting report on Rodriguez. Well, Benito is a, a guy who's picked up skills through his great experience. He's, he can punch hard. You saw that shot against Kevin Kelly. It's a guy who can punch, and he doesn't care who the opponent is. He's been in there with all those world champions, so Robbie Peaton certainly doesn't scare him. Sean, how about uh, Robbie Peaton? Robbie Peaton has overcome uh, some great tragedy in his life, beaten and robbed in his home. In the ring, he's a straight-ahead brawler with great power, and you saw that in the first round. A strong will to win, too. He really has a great desire for his career. He understands the importance of a victory in this one. He was talking to us about that beating. It was somebody that, that he actually knew and that had a little spat with, but he said it was nothing. He didn't even lock his, his the door to his house. And in the middle of the night, he came in with a stick. And 55 stitches later, and a broken kneecap later, he was in the hospital. Main event tonight, of course, the battle for the IBF Middleweight Championship. The holder, Bernard Hopkins, against Antoine Eccles. 22 and 2, all 22 wins coming by way of knockout, a legitimate championship fight. Robbie Peaton is looking pretty legitimate to me uh, through the first few minutes of this fight. Uh, in fact, to me, he looks even sharper than he did uh, a few weeks ago when he knocked out Eloy Ortega, facing a, a much better opponent here tonight. If he has started off, I think, in much sharper fashion. I think so, too. I remember it was a five-month layoff for him. And you really see the sharpness in him. Watch every time that Rodriguez reaches in with a punch, he just snaps him back. Watch how quick he is with his shots. Look at that. That is uh, great timing. Perfect punches for Bobby Pete. Pete does a nice job getting down, too. Getting down low. Never let your opponent under you. Look at that. Very quick right hand, too. I'm impressed with that quickness of hand, Robbie Pete. Yeah, one of the most accomplished amateurs in Australian history. Five-time Australian national champion. Amateur record of 130 and only 15 losses. And after the Olympic Games, Tyson factor to Sean in 1992 and 96, and as he lands that right hand. Chol Choi Su was the man who uh, beat him in the 92 Olympic Games in the quarterfinals. He won three fights before. When you don't know what to do, jab. Peden sticking that left out. You know, that's one thing that the amateurs do for you that's terrific. They teach you how important that jab. Look at that. It controls the fight. You steer your opponent where you want it. You put him in no, your no, no, no. right hand and then let him have it. Rich, you mentioned it, but you, you can't emphasize enough the difference between this performance and the last. He, he just looks so much quicker, so much more on balance. And, and that's taking nothing away from the last fight. He knocked the guy out of the fourth round. Yeah, what's that, Robbie? What's that, Robbie? Robbie? Far more overall ability here tonight. In fact, he really pleased himself with that last little right hand he threw after he turned uh, Rodriguez around. He smiled. Oh, look at that. There's the quickness, the sharpness. Not a knockdown. No, no. Not toward not a knockdown. However, anything you can do to put your opponent on the canvas. Not that he's a good knockdown, although their front feet, I believe, got tangled up. Anything you can do to put him down. <laughs> I have his feet with yours. Now, now that's it. No, 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 no. Hey, again, look at the balance. This is the strength that they're teaching him in the gym. Stay on the back of the head now, right? Coming to the end of round number two, Peden and Rodriguez, and we'll be back.
play into his game, all right? <laughs> you keep him in your rhythm, you keep him in your game. Play off the back of his head, next time it's gonna cost you a point. I'm telling you, fair warning, okay? Yeah. Go around it, so keep chopping him down, all right? So keep him in with the jab. Start doubling your jab now, because he's trying to time the first jab. Double your jab, look for the hook on the outside, all right? Take a step back. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay, everything nice and smooth. Lots and beautiful. Watch him now, he's sticking his head in, trying to get you to, get you to foul him. Very good. Keep it clean, Robbie, keep it clean. Bernard Hopkins getting his hands wrapped in preparation for his 10th title defense. Meanwhile, Robbie Peden and Benito Rodriguez uh, in round three of what has been an entertaining fight as advertised. Robbie Peden's left eye a little bit puffy right now. Very early portion of the fight for it to be puffed up. Well, you know, it's interesting. We've been talking about Peden and how effective he's been. Rodriguez has gotten there with a couple of right hands, and Peden every now and then does drop that left hand just a little bit, and as quick as, as Peden is, Rodriguez can bring that right hand pretty quickly, too. You know what he does, Peden, is he cheats that left hand out. Watch, see how close he moves it toward his opponent? That way he doesn't have to as far to travel. You have that left hand up there by your head, you have a longer way to travel with it. See, he slips it out there closer to his what opponent, the then he taps it with it. See, oh, right, push, right. it push it out there, push it out there. Oh, it's far, it's closer, and then wow. Incidentally, the referee in between rounds came into the corner and uh, told Robbie Peden, don't push the man down. As he has done on a couple of occasions, said next time you do, I'm going to take a point away. One of the control factors that a fighter wants to get in the steer your opponent into the left, but the referee tells you not to do it. Point below. Be careful. Break! No beating. Rodriguez doing some good things in this round, landing some shots, especially to the body. Although he's got that puffy uh, left eye of Pete to shoot for the left side, he's been aiming most of his attack toward the midsection in this round. Benito says that he is a brawler slugger in the ring. He says he's a strong fighter, a fuerte. Has to get in there and bang. Favorite punch is that Break. punch, the left hook to the body. Step back. The gancho. Better success than with the right hand thus far. There's a left hand that stopped Peden on the way in. He may be cheating his left hand out like Robbie's doing. Effective tool to use. I would like to see Pete bring that left hand up, up, up a little bit by his eye at times. Not all the time. It's okay to have this style sometimes. But occasionally bring it up around your eye to protect that left eye. So he kind of gives that to his opponent. He seems to have a good sense of punching. He doesn't waste a lot. Quick with that jab. That's the sharpness of, of Robbie Peden right now. No, 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 no. Suéltalo, suéltalo, suéltalo. Let him go, let him go now. Come on, let's go. A very effective round, I thought, for Robbie Peden. End of three, we're going ten, and we're coming back. Left my left my door unlocked and is um, a guy come in and beat me with a stick basically when I was asleep. Basically, I had a home invasion. I left my left my door unlocked, and is um, the guy come in and beat me with a stick? Basically, when I was asleep, I end up with 55 sticks. We start round number four, Robbie Peden and Benito Rodriguez. That's Rodriguez with the green and red stripes on his white trunks. Peden's trunks trimmed in trimmed in black. A 
we, we've talked a lot about Benito Rodriguez win over Kevin Kelly this year. But prior to that, he posted a terrific victory. He fought a Panamanian right. champion by the name of Florentino Campbell, who brought an excellent uh, record into the ring. He fought him in Panama, and he stopped him in 10 rounds. So that was the beginning of what is all of a sudden a, a career comeback for Benito Rodriguez. You have it as a shutout so far, but uh, Rodriguez, just by virtue of what you just mentioned, a tough guy, even as the going gets later. And, uh, we told you Pete and just in his third fight or second fight back after that break in at his house in Australia. We asked him about it and here's his description. Bring him up, bring him up, Robbie. Basically I had a home invasion. I left my left my door unlocked and is um, a guy come in and beat me with a stick basically when I was asleep. I ended up with 55 stitches and you now I was out of the ring for about two or three months. I couldn't train for about two or three months. I had a fractured finger, a fractured knee, knee, kneecap. Um, I had scars all over me, so. I'm back onto it now, and hopefully we can get a roll on, get a few wins up, and get a title shot. That is the game plan for Robbie Peden, and uh, well, you talk about an out of the ring distraction. Yeah, that's more than a that's distraction. A, wow, what a horrifying experience to go through. Low left hand. Stop. 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 You know he had uh, stitches okay? in his forehead too, which is certainly causes a lot of problems for any boxer. Terrible to get beat. In any fight, especially with a stick. Well, and he said he, he didn't really know what was happening. He said he was dead asleep, and he, he woke up, and he had already the worst damage had been inflicted actually before he woke up. Good thing I didn't go in. Right. Yeah, he lost that one. Bring it up. <laughs> that may be what it takes, though. Oh, nice jab! Look how sharp. Quick, snapping jab. Right hey. Good body work built by Rodriguez. He, he threw three body shots there, and they all who's got to guard against wildness. So that's when he missed that shot. Rodriguez did a good job of countering. Rodriguez really now really sharpening up. He's really he's got to be fast, but he's good. Now he's too quick. You know, that's why, that's why he's going to the body. Rodriguez downstairs trying to take some of that speed away from him. Still got, of course, our main event, that for the IBF Middleweight Championship. Howard Hopkins, Antoine Eccles. This is a 10-round fight in the junior lightweight division. Robbie Peden and Benito Rodriguez. And uh, Rodriguez, nothing if not fit. And he comes in here absolutely giving himself the best chance to win the fight. Yeah, and he's got to do that against a guy like, uh, you know, Peden. He's just 26 years old. Peden, he's in great shape himself. Rodriguez, you know, he's a, a rugged individual, and he is, his body is definitely cut. Bring him up, bring him up. a low blow from Peden. We'll be back. That's it. No. Your head and he's firing at the long overhead right. Don't step back from the guy, step around him. You got me? Yep, yep. Don't step back, step around. Just stay nice and calm. You win the fight easy. Don't let him, get, don't let him butt heads with you. You know he's clumsy. He's breaking down. Yep. Every time you get a chance, put that shot right in here. Yep. Welcome back. A reminder to watch Fox Keep it clean, Sports guys. News Primetime. Keith you. Overman, Kevin Frazier. They'll tell you everything that happened this busy day in sports. All the scores, all the highlights, all the breaking stories, and it happens every night at 10 right here on Fox Sportsnet. This round five of a scheduled 10 rounder, Robbie Peden and Benito Rodriguez. Rodriguez fighting well enough to just barely lose every round, it appears so far to me. Uh, uh, Barry, he's in every round. He's competitive every round. He lands punches every round, but I don't think enough of him. He's still a dangerous guy. A guy yes. you gotta respect right. him. Right now, let's go to Sean O'Grady, who was in the corner of Robbie Peden. Sean, thanks, Barry. Roger Bloodworth is over here in the corner. Roger, what do you like? I like everything I see so far. Uh, we wanted an opponent that would take Robbie more rounds. Uh, one that had a lot of experience. This guy in with uh, two, three world champions, and. Um, I like the way Robbie's boxing. He's taking his time. The guy's a little bit clumsy, but 
He's breaking down slowly. It seems to me that Rodriguez now trying to go to Robbie's body, trying to slow him down a bit. Does that give you a problem? No, except the referee's letting him stick the head in. Uh, what we're going to have to do is just counter with uppercuts. We have to do what we had to do. Do you try to go in this fight for the knockout? Uh, no, I, you know, I never tried for a knockout because uh, my philosophy is you, you learn. Robbie. Hey, yeah, Robbie does. You learn your, you learn your business by going around. You know, a one round knockout's going to do you any good. You have to learn your craft. But he does have one punch KO power. He can, he can, yeah, if he lands one on you, you're gone. All right, Roger Bloodward. That's it from this corner, you guys. They like what they see, and uh, it's working. Robbie Peden. All right, thanks, Sean. And Roger Bloodward, the guy who just really knows his stuff. I have great respect for him. Yeah, he's a very calm guy in the corner. He was even calm with Andrew Boada in the corner. The fact that he seemed like he was bending with a back to be extremely uh, calm with Boada in the corner of, during the fight with Michael Grant. It seemed to have everything under control until Andrew surprised us once again. Didn't he, though? <laughs> surprised Roger. Doesn't want to win. It's remarkable. And I've seen that in athletes in other sports. Can't stand prosperity. Peden doing some different things in this round. Backing off a little, Barry, and uh, showing some uh, defensive skills. Forcing Rodriguez to miss, but not throwing as many punches. Oh, oh. Alongside the left eye of Peden is not appreciably worse. Both fighters have landed their share of low blows in this fight. You just saw that last one from Rodriguez. Well, so far as we take a look back in this, uh, the fight style was uh, established early here in round one. You see Rodriguez telling the referee immediately that was no knockdown, and he was right. Not counted as so by Jorge Alonso. But Pete was putting the pressure on. They're complaining about a low blow, but not protecting himself at all times was Rodriguez, and Peden made him pay for it. Peden has just been uh, coming forward and uh, continually putting pressure on. As you see it time after time, and in that case, he just put his hand behind the head of uh, Rodriguez and just kind of helped him to the ground. And he did draw a warning from Jorge Alonso uh, for that. Jorge went into his corner a couple of rounds ago and said, any more of that stuff, I'm going to duck the point. We haven't had any problem like that since. So you see what uh, Robbie Peden has done when he's gone past the fourth round. not a guy who uh, necessarily thinks he's going to go in there and get everybody out of there, although he has shown a good ability to do that, 9 out of 14. It's round 6. We're going 10. Yeah, he certainly seems uh, willing to learn, Pete does. He's been training, by the way, up in uh, Big Bear, California, which is up at just a, a little over, actually, a mile high altitude. So he gets himself uh, whipped into really good condition up there. Going back home to Brisbane after this fight, though, spent the holidays with his family. Comes from a boxing family. His dad was a fighter, his uncle was a fighter. He said, even my mother's fought Lisa. Good left hand there, although Rodriguez shakes his hand and says, no, that usually means it hurts. I thought he was maybe trying to shake the cobwebs out a little bit there, Barry. He, uh, it seemed as though he uh, he felt that one, I'm pretty sure. You know, Peden, I, I got, after our uh, show a few weeks ago when Peden debuted here on Fox Sports Net, uh, I received quite a few emails from people over in Australia who saw the fight and were glad that uh, we all were able to see him here in America. And they have very high hopes for him in Australia. I think we're going to see an awful lot more of him. Sean already mentioned earlier what a great amateur he was. So this guy was a known quantity even before he turned pro. He was in a couple of Olympic games. Back in 1992 and 1996. He lost to Serafim Todorov of Bulgaria. And actually thought about turning pro after the 1992 Olympic Games. There was some pressure on him to do that. He felt, no, I'm just too young. I'm right. going to wait. He was only 18 years old at the time. As I mentioned, he lost in the quarterfinals to Chol Choi Su, a Korean fighter in 92. Uh, uh, but he had won three fights before that and uh, really impressed everybody. But he knew he wasn't ready for a professional right. career at that point. And the Korean went on to win the gold medal. A little blood from the nose of Robbie Peden shouldn't be a problem. Oh, 
Peyton, by the way, has never been past eight rounds. And uh, tonight, if the fight continues in this same type of vein, he'll be uh, stretched out into that area. And it doesn't look like uh, he'll come up wanting that area, I no, would think. We talked to him about that, too, yesterday. You know, I, uh, he said, I've been waiting to go 10 rounds. So this is not going to as it is. It's been uh, something that's been, that he's been anticipating. Benito, man, he's, he's just coming forward. Unflappable, really, uh, is Rodriguez. He's keeping himself more than just competitive in this fight. Now he's right there, and he's still very dangerous. I mean, he's a guy who, who can get you out of it. I like that, though, that they're testing Robbie Peden against the guy of Rodriguez's caliber. He's been wild the last 15, 20 seconds, has Rodriguez. Another pretty good round, I thought, for Peden. And Rodriguez started to get a little bit wild. Right now, let's go back into the dressing area. The champ, Sean O'Grady, is with Antoine Eccles. Champ? Thanks, Barry. You know what? You're a little nervous until you get to about this point where you get your gloves on, you get your hands wrapped, you're ready to go in there and fight, and Antoine Eccles has gotten to that point now. He is fired up. He's ready to go. Loosening up a little bit calms the nerves, and it makes you know what you want to do. You go through your fight plan. You run through your battle plan. Make sure you got it in your mind. Also, uh, this pad on your trainer, you get a little retribution here. You get to hit the trainers a little bit. All right, Barry and Rich, this is exciting. <laughs> All right, thanks, Sean. Better get out of there before he wants to hit you. Yeah. Well, he, there's a guy who's worked up a good sweat already, yeah, though. Yeah, he has. Yeah. You know, we talked to him yesterday, too, about, about the being nervous and are you going to be nervous having the big stage. And uh, he said, no, absolutely not. He said, I've, I've, I've never been nervous as a professional fighter. And yet when we talked to him, he did seem to have a sense of nervousness, but I got the feeling it was more about actually just being interviewed, perhaps, with a camera. That's few, what I think, too. A few inches from his face than he was about the fight. This is round seven. Robbie Peden and Benito Rodriguez. Rodriguez has got a face. It just looks like it's been chiseled out of stone. And he really is fit. I mean, he's, he's coming here in very good shape. This is not a kid, Rodriguez. He's 33 years old. Always gives a good effort. You wonder how a guy, Barry, like Benito Rodriguez, had he taken a different course in his career, rather than fighting all those world champions that I told you. Know, he's fought nine world champions in his career, and really top uh, contenders like Golden Johnson and Gideon Spadas and uh, uh, Jose Noyola and all, a lot of these others as well. I mean, real recognizable names from the very beginning. Had he, had he approached his career different in his management, if he had any, uh, approached his career different uh, early on if he might really have gone further than he has rather than be a simple journeyman. Yeah, because he does have some skills. And in fact, all you really have to do is look at his record, Rich. And in his fourth fight, he went 10 rounds. In his fifth fight, he went 10 rounds. In his seventh fight, he went 12 rounds. So if that's not being rushed, I don't know what is. <laughs> now, that's my point. That's a kid who's not being allowed really to develop but is being thrown to the wolves. Now, to further that point, the only one of the, he only lost one of those fights. But he is a fighter that really does seem to have some skills. I mean, he's got, he's absolutely fit, as we've said. He does have a strong right hand. Even though he says his best punch is his left hand. As I watch Peden here, I think really he's going to have success because of that left jab of his. It's going to really set a lot of stuff up for him. And he's so quick with his punches. And that right hand uppercut lead just then it was a terrific combination. Good left hand when he got Rodriguez off balance there. Very effective in this round. A little bit of flash of heads there. Now, Rodriguez doesn't actually uh, keep it a secret when he feels like he's been wronged in there. Rodriguez may be starting to wear down a little bit. He's getting a little bit wilder with his punches. And he's being hit a lot more by Peden. We come to the end of the seventh round. We've got a lot more to come from here in Miami.
and swell. It is All right, let's do it. Huh? This is the eighth round coming. You got eight, nine, and ten. All right? Yep. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep boxing him. You hurt him that round. You hurt him bad that round. When you hit him with the one, two, step, step up with the hook right hand, okay? Yep. If you hit him with the hook right hand, step up with the one, two. Just keep doing what you're doing. Let's have Make no mistakes with it. All you're trying to do is uh, complain. When you're on the internet, you're going to Wipe up the water, man. Hey, a reminder to stay tuned Sunday nights at 9 o'clock for one of the truly great shows here on Fox Sports Net. Chris Myers hosts six, the 60 Minutes of Sports Television. It, of course, is Going Deep. Watch Going Deep with Chris Sunday nights at 9 right here on Fox Sports Net. Still to come, our main event, the IBF Middleweight Championship, Bernard Hopkins and Antoine Eccles. Coming up after this, this is round eight of a 10 round junior lightweight fight and uh, a guy you're going to be seeing a lot more of I believe Robbie Peden of Brisbane Australia against Benito Rodriguez. Fighting long fights is uh, certainly familiar territory for Benito Rodriguez. Looking through his career he's fought 57 times you know he's only had one fight that went under three rounds. Usually when you're starting off it's a lot of those uh, early round KOs. Not the case for Benito. He's had to work just about every time he's come to work. I showed you that comparison earlier between these two. Experience edge uh, completely. No, oh, no, no, I got it. I got it. In the corner of Benito Rodriguez. And he's been active right along, too. He hasn't had any uh, appreciable time off. This is his third fight this year. Fought five times last year. Continues to get peppered with that jab with Pete, which is a very good weapon. Well, Robbie's got a guy who's coming in on him, and when he puts that jab on him in such successful fashion, he should build upon that and launch some combinations right. off of it. He's throwing the jab almost exclusively in this round. One thing that did, has struck me, and I don't know if this uh, struck you this way, Rich, but uh, Rodriguez was using that right hand a lot early in the fight. And about two rounds ago, I saw him shaking the right hand as if it would hurt. And this round, I thought was even throw it, so just to show it to me. Yeah, he's sh he's shaking it. Uh, I've seen it about the th maybe two or three times that he's done that. There, he did it right he's there. Doing it right now. I don't know if that's with a hurt hand or if he's just trying to distract people. He can gets around the ring pretty good. Quick handed. Last couple of rounds, though, not uh, being the bomber team, being the boxer team. That was a good right hand from Rodriguez. Rodriguez, as we've said, right. always oh, dangerous. Oh, 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 he's had a lot of knockouts in the late rounds. Start looking for the body where it's soft. Hopkins as he starts to loosen up and you can see he's already uh, broken a pretty good sweat as well. 
Meanwhile here we start round number nine Robbie Peden and Benito Rodriguez. Uncharted waters now for Robbie Peden. Rodriguez trying to pick it up and Rodriguez trying to make his statement here at the beginning of the round if he can. And he's doing just that. Yes, he is. A straight right hand. Right there. Oh, 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 oh. Peden's jab though has been very impressive. That time he hit on a break. On your card, Rich, uh, decided edge for Peden. And yet I see Rodriguez is being very competitive in the fight. You take a look at that score. And that's because Peden's doing just enough in my mind to win each round. But nonetheless, uh, Rodriguez is in there every round. He's, he's Ten rounds for the first time. Every fighter will tell you, no, I'm not worried about it. And every fighter deep down inside has that big question mark, can I do it? And that may be what's happening to Pete. Is. Sean? Thanks, Barry. And that's what they're fighting for, that uh, world championship belt, the IBF middleweight championship of the world. You had a chance to look in the other corner room to see our dressing room to see what uh, Antoine Eccles is up to. Check out this corner, uh, this dressing room. Now, this is, there's a lot riding on this it? fight for Bernard Hopkins. He knows what the importance. And you know when your fight is ready when he's just a little bit accurate in his comments. And that's what I get from Bernard Hopkins. A little bit edgy, but that's the way you want to be because he realizes the importance of this fight and the significance of a victory for him tonight. Going for his 10th defense of his middleweight championship fight. Back to you guys at ringside. All right, thanks, Sean. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. <laughs> look, look at these guys. They call me executioner. That's what that's all about. Well, Bernard used to actually wear the hood into the ring. Yes, he did. Maybe he'll break that out tonight again. Well, I started to say, though, is I think it was a little bit edgy even earlier at the beginning of this program when, we, when uh, Sean interviewed him. Bernard Hopkins, as you know, never met a sentence he didn't like. And uh, he, he's usually good for five minutes per answer. And uh, he was, uh, by his standards, Kurt with Sean. And I think that's a result of his mind's on something else right now. I've never known Bernard Hopkins not to be ready to fight. No, I think that's that's uh, certainly fair comment. I think, uh, you know, Bernard is trying to sell himself as someone who's a, a superstar, and there are, there are some who believe that that is the case. But he's had continued fights with promoters in his career, and uh, he finds himself in that same situation even now. But once he gets in there, he has uh, handled everything put in front of him. Robbie Peden, uh, should he be able to stay out of harm's way, will uh, put another notch in the belt. 
decision here in Miami after this. Sean O'Grady. Yes. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm listening to you guys. Everything. Yeah. Stick, mic. Stick mic configuration. Woo. I put a big thing around Man. my neck. So. Momentarily. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> All right. Sunday Night Bites on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to the Mikasuki Resort. We're here in Miami on a balmy night. Activity in the ring uh, was pretty hot for our first fight. Robbie Peden and Benito Rodriguez. Let's find out who wins it now as we go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Mark Streisand, scores at 98 to 92. Rocky Young and Peter Trematerra both score about 99 to 91. All three in favor of the winner. And still undefeated, Robbie the Bomber Peden. Yeah. 